I was not aware that I was muted. <laughs> oh, as I was saying, I'm a bit under the weather today. So there you go. I uh, just want to welcome everybody. This is the Education, Culture, and Youth Services meeting. I, we are live streaming. And we have our new co-chair, which is Phyllis Nastasio. So welcome. Hi. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, what I was saying while I was muted was uh, that also Malcolm, Malcolm Gray will not be attending our meeting. He is actually working, so he will not be able to jump in and attend. So we are going to start our meeting. Okay. Okay, would you be able to take notes, Phyllis? Got it. All right, thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Uh, okay, we have a few people as speakers this evening. Uh, we have Reynaldine Simeon. We have Destiny Kirby. We have Mariam Zaki. And we do have somebody that... Uh, just a few hours ago had put in a request to speak and that's esther osafo and three of the three of the our speakers rinaldi destiny and ma'am mariam will be speaking with regards to a bill which is intro 0081-2022 and esther osafi which is new york state bill Five seven four eight seven C um S seven four eight seven C. So what I'd like to do is give each of them a few moments to speak about why they're advocating the bill. And um then after they're done, basically have questions from not only the committee but also anybody else who is here as public. So I am going to start with the one particular bill. I have both the bills up here. Um, the, the intro 0081-2022 is reporting on food and nutrition education in New York City schools. This bill will require the Department of Education to annually submit to the New York City Council and post to the department's website a report on nutrition education in New York City schools. The department would be required to specify whether nutrition education is combined with other health related education and whether it is provided by an external nutrition education provider. The report would include information about the number of certified dietitians teaching nutrition in each school. The data in the report would be aggregated by school. Within each grade level in each school, the data would be disaggregated by race, gender, and free or reduced price lunch status. So I'm going to call to the floor. The first person, which is Rinaldi Sim Simeon. So Rinaldi, tell us a little bit about yourself and also why this is a bill you are advocating for. And I, um, I'd like for your video screens to be on if you are going to be speaking. So, Rinaldi, are you with us? Hi, everyone. Yes. Um, I see two. Let's see who is. It's Miriam, Destiny. Rinaldi, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, will you be able to put your video screen on? Yes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so you're you're first you're first in line. Sorry, I'm turning on my camera. 
Okay. Take your time. I just like to see who I'm speaking to and for everybody else to see who is speaking. So I do request that. I think it's working now. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My name is Reynolds Dean Simeon, and I'm currently a student at CUNY SPH uh, studying public health with a concentration of community health. Okay. And tonight, um, myself and my colleagues, my classmates, are going to advocate for Bill Intro 081. Okay. So I'll let the rest of them introduce themselves. Thanks, Rinaldine. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Destiny Kirby. I'm a fourth year MD MPH student at Einstein and CUNY. I also am a resident of Morris Park um, and I'm concentrating in health policy. So this is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, my colleagues and I have actually prepared a brief um, presentation together so that it's not as repetitive. Um, so uh, I can uh, uh, let Miriam go ahead and introduce herself and then we can all briefly talk about this bill together. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Miriam. Um, I'm a last semester student at the CUNY SPH. Uh, I'm graduating with my MPH in health policy and management. And I'm advocating for this bill because I've also been working for the Department of Education for the past three years. And I believe this bill will have like a long term um, health outcome based on what it advocates for. I'll go more into that when it's my turn to speak. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, so, so briefly some background on this bill and why we chose to advocate for it. Um, approximately 22.3% of all children across New York City are considered food insecure. And that was actually projected to increase about 40% as a result of the pandemic. Um, additionally, uh, obesity and heart disease are some of the most common causes of preventable death in America. Um, as well as uh, um, the fact that 19.4% of children in New York being considered overweight, which could lead to further obesity um, in the future. So there have been many programs that have been uh, created to counteract this, like SNAP and food banks and pantries, like we have a lot here in the Bronx, as well as youth centers across the city. Um, but a recent study actually showed that there was no um, accountable accountability um, for schools to be involved in, in this type of health disparity. Um, and so this study actually recommended that we develop a new way to require schools to report on the type of nutrition education that we're providing. And so I'll let Rinaldine um, briefly discuss the bill. Bill Intro 81 is a recently proposed bill proposed that the New York City Department of Education provides the New York City Council with an annual report on the nutrition education that is provided in New York City schools. It is required that the report describe whether or not nutrition education is coupled with other health related education and whether or not it is offered by an external provider of nutrition education, separated by grade level, race, gender, and eligibility for free or reduced price lunches. The information about the number of registered dietitians who are teaching nutrition in each school must also be included in the report. It is strongly suggested that the New York City Department of Education design and execute a comprehensive program on nutrition education for all the schools in New York City. The policy must make it mandatory for all kids, regardless of their color, gender, or socioeconomic standing to get an appropriate level of nutrition, nutrition knowledge. To conclude, the New York City Council should pass the bill requiring the Department of Education to report on nutrition education in New York City schools. This bill would help fill the current information gap on nutrition education in New York City schools 
and would enable more informed decision making on how to improve nutrition education in the future. And I'll pass on to Miriam. Uh, unmute. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I'm here today to speak about uh, the New York City Council Bill, Intro 00812022, to ensure that public schools in New York City are incorporating nutrition education to the curriculum and offering students the appropriate resources. In 2017, out of 1,840 New York City schools, 44% of schools lacked the nutrition education program. Students receive less than eight hours of required education each year, which is below the 40 to 50 hours requirement to affect change behavior. According to the CDC, nutrition education empowers students with the knowledge and skills to make healthy decisions. Studies find that nutrition education associates with health promotion and disease prevention, improves students' knowledge and attitude about healthy behavior, leads to positive changes, better health outcomes, and increased nutrition intakes. In essence, the bill will require New York City schools to submit a yearly report of their curriculum to ensure they're integrating nutrition education programs including the certification of the personnel teaching the course to confirm the credibility of the material that they're teaching. Thank you. So thank you so much for letting us present um, to this community board and we just wanted to uh, save some time if you any if any of you really had any questions about this bill. I do. <laughs> Boy, you <laughs> jumped in fast there. <laughs> uh, I'm a teacher. I teach at Mars Park. Um, currently, lunch is free for everybody in public and Catholic schools. Now, where would the funding be coming for this program? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so far with the proposed bill, there actually isn't um, any funding that's necessary. It would just require the administrators to um, culminate, culminate together um, any data they have about current food and education programs that they have. And so if they don't already have um, a structured food and education food education program, then they would simply report that they don't have one versus schools that already have these types of programs within their curriculum. They'll just be required to report who's teaching it, what organizations are involved, what students are getting it. And so really it's more of a question of um, not the funding for it, but um, who is actually putting this data together because we know that that workload um, will have to fall on someone. Okay, but I see the bill says uh, certified dietitians teaching the nu about nutrition. I can tell you right now, we do not have certified nutrition, um, certified nutritionists teaching in our public schools or our Catholic schools. And honestly, there's no time in a school day to add any more classes. Right. So I don't know how, what I would worry about more is fixing the school lunch program because most of it is inedible. Right, and and so the bill doesn't actually require you to bring in dietitians or to to add anything to your curriculum. It's simply asking that if this is already a part of your curriculum to report to the Department of Education how it's being deployed. So there are some schools, um, some like private and charter schools that have these sorts of things in their curriculum already, and they would have to report. Uh, what sorts of things are happening in this curriculum, but like if your school um, in Morris Park doesn't have uh, a specific class on food and nutrition, or if they don't have any topics that are already being discussed, then you would simply report that you don't have that. But it, do it doesn't require you to add anything to your curriculum as it stands. Are you familiar with the school lunch program? Um, I'm I'm somewhat familiar. Is is that the school lunch program that um, allows all children to receive free um, yes. breakfast and lunch every single yes. day? Yeah. Yes, and it's for uh, public schools and Title One Catholic schools. Mm -hmm. I teach at one of the Catholic schools. Um, the food winds up in the garbage. I know. Yeah, I work. I work, and uh, I've been working for the Department of Education for three years. It, the food is horrendous. Yeah, it is in order see, to. <laughs> It's too hot for the kids to eat. You're not, a kindergartner is not going to eat spicy chili or spicy no. taco meat. So I most guess children are not going to eat that. No, no, they're not. The food winds up in the garbage. So they've taken away things that the kids do like, 
like the chicken nuggets, the pizza, that the kids eat. And for a lot of our kids, it's the only meal they get. The only hot meal they get is what they eat in school. That's so right. my opinion, we need to focus on the food that we're feeding our kids, making sure that they eat, not worrying about filing reports, because that's just more paperwork that nobody even looks at. My opinion uh, as yes. a teacher. I, I I do have a question with regards to does would this be a broad base net with not only Catholic but public but also charter? Yes. Okay. So um I'm in a, I'm in agreement. Well, you know, having had my son in in uh, Catholic school and from kindergarten up until eighth grade. There was always an issue with the food, not just with him, but the reports I got back from the people who are in there, um, you know, um, giving out the foods, uh, giving out the food and getting phone calls back saying, your son is throwing everything away. Yeah. Your son, your son is not eating this, etc. So I, I was lucky enough to get that information relayed back to me, but I'm sure that's not across the board. So why? Why shouldn't there be advocacy to fix the vendors, as Phil said, to that fix fix the vendors in the food that is being distributed? And if the vendors cannot provide, get other vendors. So um, to and and maybe having each school, each particular school give their uh, give their wish list or their their input, and see if across the board that there's there's common there's common issues, there's common um, agreements, and then find the vendors that can accommodate that, so that the children do get nutritious food. You know, I, I mean, every child is going to love pizza. I hate to say it; it's not the most nutritional food, but I love pizza. Most most people do but you can have nutritional food that kids are not going to throw away yeah absolutely i agree, I agree. Yeah, the so. thing is a lot of it now is pre-packaged foods because when a stove or an oven breaks down they won't replace it so mm -hmm. there are very few schools left that still have stoves and ovens mm -hmm. everything is these microwave type uh ovens that they just heat prepackaged food and that's what they're serving the kids. Like they like they serve on the airlines. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and those eggs on the airlines turn green. Okay. So uh it, it's just uh I think there's a lot that could be done within the system now and work and just get I, I, I don't know. There there should be a task force or a committee. Mm -hmm. working on that and gathering that kind of data of where they're at right now um who are the choice of vendors etc uh i uh i see that alicia um ali does want to say ask a question so please do hi um so my name is ali sirena novak i'm actually also part of the cuny sph program and i'm advocating for this bill as well and i think i kind of uh i i hear and completely agree with everything that you both said, but I wanted to clarify that this bill is specifically um, related to the nutrition education that is currently being taught in classrooms, along with other health education like fitness, like sex ed, et cetera. So it's not really so interrelated with the actual food that's being served at our schools and more how do we aggregate data about what kids are learning about nutrition. So uh, there is a, a bit of a distinction here that I think um, needs to be clarified. And I think along with what my colleagues, you know, were mentioning is a program or a set of data that can kind of see which schools do have adequate nutrition education, food and nutrition education um, will help us to identify communities and schools that are maybe lacking in this area compared with others and where we can invest more resources such as like you mentioned a uh, licensed nutritionist to teach these programs right because we need to have qualified instructors so i kind of just wanted to point out and clarify because i i agree with what both of you said but i think there was maybe a misunderstanding of what the bill is no, no i understood it perfectly but i just think it's a waste of 
resources. The, mm, okay. I think we really need to concentrate on what our kids are being fed. As opposed to what the what they're being taught. What they're being about taught. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. So and I think going going off of that as well, I think it's so, so important that we're really focusing on what food is being fed to our children. Um, but I'm very much so a believer that we can't make any changes unless we have data that shows what changes we can be making, which means, unfortunately, um, I know that our schools are so under resourced. I know that our teachers are so exploited and not being paid enough. Um, but some somehow I, I hope that there could be a task force that can kind of come together and say, um, this is the data that we have. So when it comes to actually advocating to the Department of Education, for example, you can say, this is what we have. These are the numbers, et cetera. And then you can make change that way. No, I, I, I do totally agree that the data is important because that's the first place to um, the first place uh, to go to. Um, I think that each one of the schools should be asked to input um, their inf their overall information. Uh, how what their I'm glad you clarify that, Ali. As far as health and nutrition, I do believe teaching children from a very uh, young age what is healthy, having a salad. We we understand children are just not for salads, but I have quite a few uh, friends of mine, mothers, that they taught their children very young age, and still at this age of 33, whatever that they are, they still have they still have a salad with all their meals. So it is something that needs to be um, reinforced, needs to be introduced, and you need to see what schools have it, what they don't have, what, like you said, what they're lacking. So there needs to be a survey, um, whatever. And I know that there are so many schools, but while percentages and numbers are good, you need to get that input from each one of the schools and then find common ground. So, um, but as far, yeah. go ahead. But as far as health education, so the health and nutrition is basically goes hand in hand. Right, and it's at the moment it's lumped into one kind of unit that falls under the umbrella of health education. And this bill would like to identify specifically what is allocated specifically towards nutrition and food education, whether that's you know macro and micronutrients. What do these th do these things mean? Proteins, carbohydrates, et cetera. Like, how much are we allocating towards this? area of health education. So this is kind of what this bill and the sponsors of this bill are intending to 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 gather with this data collection. So yeah, that's a, a little okay. bit. Cynthia, you have your hand up. Would you like to speak? Yeah, I just wanted to mention, I mean, I think it's um I think the idea and the rationale behind it is 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 great. Um the two don't have to be mutually exclusive. I think um Phyllis made a really strong point about dealing with the issue from like the vendors and the actual food itself. But at the same time, I think it's a good opportunity to empower our children with a little more knowledge about the food that they're taking in. And maybe, you know, if they get the adequate um, education around healthier foods, and I, I hate the use of the word healthy because it's, a, it's an automatic turnoff for our kids. Yeah. Um, but just kind of educating them about the fuel that we put into our bodies and, and how it can help or harm us will will empower them to maybe, you know, raise a stink about the food that they might be getting at school and what it's lacking. It, it, it may give us a little more ammunition in the future to kind of advocate for better meals for our kids. Uh, let me let me ask everybody here what. When when we all, I mean, I look back on my uh, on my school years, and I know from an early age, we all were taught, you know, the pyramid. We were taught about what was healthy, what was not, and we know that that has changed. <laughs> Thank God. Um, but the thing is, what what is, what are they being armed with now? Um, is they being armed with information? Um, or, or just the quality of that information is not good. 
I would say it's a little bit of both. I would say that we want like the point of this bill is that we want to make sure that students have the appropriate resources so that they're able to make more informed decisions. But we also want to make sure that they're being taught by certified nutritionists so that they like that information is credible. Not that they're telling them eat a salad, but in a way that like you eat a salad in order, for example, to have better health outcomes, that it might prevent diseases, chronic illness. So it's a way that we're providing students with the appropriate knowledge, but at the same time, they're making more informed decisions based on what they're learning in schools. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Phyllis. I know we do teach the food pyramid, but it's not taught by a nutritionist. It's taught by the science teacher. Oh, okay. And like gathering, and that's like the type of data that would be really helpful in a bill like this, right? Like where we can identify like, okay, in, in the school that you're currently teaching and this is, and that science teacher may be perfectly qualified to be teaching about nutrition because many science teachers I'm sure are perfectly qualified in this area, but not every some you know it might be the gym teacher somewhere else and so this is like the kind of data that would be really helpful in kind of understanding uh the the disparity across schools um and making you know more informed decisions down the line once we've kind of analyzed the data to you know that we've collected so yeah i agree 100 percent like to add to that as well, I think um, something that's really important when we're collecting this data is um, just trying to understand like what areas of the city are receiving this education from these nutritionists yes. and outside programs versus I know in the Bronx from myself and my friends who went to school in the Bronx, like we might not necessarily have the resources to be able to do that. And so when you gather that data and then you present it to the Department of Education, you say, hey, the Bronx needs this, this help. Like we need these resources be, to be able to empower our students. That is how we are able to present this to them. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's, I, I think it's been a challenge for, for many, many years. Um, and you know, knowledge is power. And in every single day, it doesn't matter whether you're a child or an adult, you're trying to think about what goes what goes in your mouth and what it's doing. Even if you still do it anyway, you know, you know, you do know that you know, this might cause issues. This is too much glucose. This is, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is. It, it's it's so important and it will be with them for the rest of their life. So this is something that is um, going to really improve on the quality of, you know, the quality of life of our, of our future, which is our children. So, right. well, um, does anybody else have any other questions? <laughs> Uh, I did have one one other question. Do you know? I, I don't know if um, with this nutrition education would would is the idea for there to be a component of um, oh shoot, I just oh um, just in general, you know, we we're learning so much more now about the importance of gut health to mm -hmm. overall yes. being things like probiotics and and just how gut health affects everything from mood to you know, depression to just normal bowel movements even. Yes. Is is that supposed to be kind of part of this education? Uh, I would think that that would be age appropriate. I think because maybe younger children would not be able to absorb that as much, but as, the, you know, for middle school, I, I don't know. I'm throwing that out there. Does What does everybody think about that? I think the parameters around like what is taught will probably be determined by the Department of Education and, you know, the districts with, with working within this program, you know, um, I, I don't think this bill and for us here speaking today is we don't have, you know, the authority or information to say what specifically will be taught, but we we're just trying to kind of it reinforced the need to gather this data so that we can make in more informed decisions like the importance of introducing gut health into the curriculum for nutrition right. education, right? So I, I don't think we have the answers to these questions, but um, that is like, a, that's why we need this, exactly why we need this data. Yeah. 
Well, it's a very, yeah, it's a very good, it's a very good question. And this is all information for all of you who are advocating for this bill to. Add and also to um, analyze even more when you're presenting for this bill. Uh, I see that there's five, there's five city council people. I think right now that are sponsoring this bill. Yeah. Um, and. I've just, um. Has anybody had meetings with any of these city council people? I'm just curious. I'm just curious if if there had been, has this has there been a roundtable or anything on this? Um. So one of my classmates and I are scheduled to meet with Council Member Velasquez uh, in the next week. Um. And so if you wanted, we could email you an update about how that goes. I'm not sure if yes. your classmates yeah. have met with their. Um, any politicians yet? All right, thank you. That would be that would be great, uh, because you know sometimes things start out a certain way, and then as you start adding uh, specifics, they metamorphosize into something even better. So, um, all of you, I wish you extremely well with this, because as we all know, nutrition and health um, are are so essential to everybody's for the, for extended life and for for just good quality of life all around and it's so important um you know my myself i i became a um an athlete late in life but i had to understand more about conditioning and what i was putting into my system and understanding that i get out of it what i put into it and that simple little thing, what phrase was something that was uh, really carried with me, and you want that to be instilled in every child. So I, I wish you guys really well, and um, and yes, please please keep us updated because this is extremely important. So um, I just want to put out there um, if there are any other questions. From our committee members or Chan Chan, did you have a question? Yes, I think that I dropped my question on the check. Uh just wondering like how you're gonna collect the data and info. It looks like Destiny already answered my question that answered yes. yes. Yeah, I see that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I guess this is like in a very early stages, correct? Yeah. All right. Yes. 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 I think you guys done a fantastic job. This is really great. Um Looking forward to get more information and seeing this, you know, going somewhere. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, come to fruition and even be better than you probably uh, even thought. Being better than it, uh, you know, because you with with dis more discussion, there's going to be more input, and that's always exciting. But the storming is always exciting. So, wish you all very well. Uh, Please keep us informed. You're always free to come back. <laughs> You're always free to come back to as a guest um, at any of the education meetings. And anytime there, uh, you have a question about when the date of our meetings are, please go to Community Board Bronx Community Board 11 and look under the calendars, the agendas. And as you, and I do apologize for getting that late to you, but I thought I had sent it out and I didn't. And then I was like, oh, um, I said, I, I'm just going to send it out to whoever needs it. And since I was a little bit under the weather, it, it just threw me off a bit. So I do apologize for that. Um, but anytime, go to the calendar, check out the agendas. The links will always be there. This is how we, we do it at Community Board 11. So feel free, anybody, to come back anytime we have our meetings to give us an update. And, and I think with all of the interest that we'll be expecting that. So I, I, I applaud what you guys are doing. I do. And um, good luck. And just be very, very stern about and very f uh, firm about the importance of this. And I, I think it's, I don't understand how there could be anybody that could argue with you. To be quite honest, so uh, good luck in the good luck in the future, and please keep us informed. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're quite welcome, everybody. Thank you. You guys did a great job. Um, 
Uh, we're going to go on to our next uh, our next speaker that is it advocating for another bill, uh, which is uh, New York State Bill S seven four eight seven C. So Esther, would you like to speak? I see you on the screen, Esther. Let's see. There we go. Okay, Esther, anytime you would like to speak. I, I'm, I'm waiting. I just messaged her. I think she's probably having uh, connection issues. Okay. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is just sort of read. Okay, I'm going to read what this bill. Okay, this bill. Right now, this particular bill is status wise. Is in committee. Which means it hasn't come to the floor. Or in the calendar. And. The overview says relates to false or misleading advertisements of food and food products provides factors to determine whether an advertisement is false or misleading provides for enforcement and a private right of action. I will, I will tell you, I can't agree with that more. Uh, my, uh, my years of working have been in advertising. So I have seen my share of medical advertising, health advertising, what the FDA puts on their, you know, their um, information with, uh, and um, this would be an extremely wonderful thing if especially with our children, it is monitored because children are just so vulnerable and if you tell them that eating mac and cheese every single day is going to make them healthy, okay, or um, anything else that we know should be done in moderation, uh, should be, um, you know, definitely, definitely be monitored. I, I don't know how anybody else feels, but I couldn't agree with it more. Um, okay, she's not unmuted yet. Okay, um, but I don't just, I just don't know how it's going to be monitored. I mean, I guess that's my question. How do you monitor the advertisements? And is it only on within the school uh, property? Or would it be overall? So th those are my questions. Yeah, I'm curious because we don't advertise food in the schools. So I'm curious what this, what this is about. Yes. Yes. I mean, we have posters in our lunchroom, but those are provided by uh, Department of Education and they're basically just cartoon character posters, nothing with any kind of ads on them. Mm. Uh, the only, the only things that I remember in school when my son was going to school really what was actually the the food pyramid? Oh, okay. Yeah, I I I agree with Cynthia. There's always those loopholes. Yep. Always the loopholes. The loopholes. It's on, and people need to you know people need to understand that you need to do your homework a little bit. Yeah. It's just like when, quote unquote. Uh, the ASPCA or a shelter says they are a no kill shelter where that is that is not true. Because there is a legal loophole that says that they could send their animals to a place that will. Um, euthanize them, so, you know, the is is ready. Burn. I'm sorry. I see her hand up. Okay, Esther, go right ahead. Esther? 
Okay, Esther. Are you having difficulty, Esther? If you could put it in the chat, that would be great. And Esther's muted now. Yes, but she she has the ability to unmute herself. I could unmute all at this point, which I just did. So Esther, you are unmuted. Are you having difficulty? We are very curious about the bill. <laughs> I'm trying to get in touch with her. I, I think she might be having connection issues. <laughs> oh, she was really excited to talk about the bill today. <laughs> well, I, I do applaud everybody here that actually was able to not have any issue with WebEx since that is not, you know, your usual app that people use. So I, I applaud everybody who was able to have uh, to have that done. Mary, so. do you know anything about the bill that you can tell us about? I, I actually don't though. I, I was waiting for her to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna wait, Esther. If you I'm just gonna put it put it here in the in the chat. She just responded in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Whenever you are ready, Esther. In the meantime, okay, Esther, I will wait for you. But in the meantime, I just wanted everybody to know that um, the Yankee Leadership Award, the deadline has been extended to December 30th, 2022. Um, and from what I understand, after the few phone calls that I make, we will be having um, a few other sub submissions, right. which is wonderful. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing who they are. And um, I, I, I know that our guests here aren't aware, but the Yankee Leadership Award, every, every community board actually gets money from the Yankees. And there are five nom nominees that are selected. And those five nominees get... $750 basically for them to use as they please. It does not have to be for the education or books or tuition. Uh, but you know, there is criteria. The criteria is that uh, they have to be between the ages of 14 and 20. They have to live within community board 11, or they have to do their volunteer work or um, within community board 11 jurisdiction within those boundaries. So um, this has been going on for quite a few years and it's wonderful because it does plant seeds of leadership. And just like everybody here, all of you guys, your, your students, etc. but you're taking initiative and that's something that you want to plant in everybody. So, um, Oh, great, Chun Chun. Thank you. You have two submissions coming. Yes, I do. I do. Um, I actually met a uh, new friend that she's teaching one of the high school in District 11. So it's great that, like she said, and then she forwarded it to her student and, and they're very excited. And um, so two will be coming in. Um, yes. Good. So um, just a question about the uh, qualification. So does it need to be in this district when the student go to, like has to go to school in this district or can they go to other district but then do community work in here yeah. right They're, yes yes in other words yes. they have to live in community board 11 or they have to do their volunteer work etc within the borders mm -hmm. of community board 11 because every every mm -hmm. community board will have um their own set of submissions of nominees okay. yeah because i i know some other um friends as well uh, but they don't live in this community um, maybe they are willing to do community service in here to submit uh, but I will spread the word you know it's a great opportunity for everyone even not in this uh, district yeah mm -hmm. and whatever whatever I mean whatever community board that they are within the boundaries of they should they should find out about it and ask about it because it's given to each one of the community boards okay perfect thank you so much 
Mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. mm -hmm. uh, Esther says, I can hear you, but it seems you can't hear me. Okay, I'm going to unmute everybody. Can you hear? Uh, okay, I unmuted you. So, uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm Esther Safo, and I'm, ad I'm advocating for New York City State Bill 7487 that will ban false and misleading advertisement of food to address childhood obesity. This is more, this bill is concerned for um, health more than education, but I would like you to listen and with the implementation of this bill. Recent research shows that childhood obesity affects one in three children, making it the most common chronic disease among children. In New York City, childhood obesity is epidemic. Recent studies of NYC children show that 15 to 19.4% of children are overweight. An additional 22 to 27 percent are obese. These high numbers are concerning and have significant public health implications. Recent studies have linked the physical and social environment that advertise food high in calories, fat, and sodium to children as the key factor of childhood obesity. Okay, These junk food advertisers manipulate children into consuming food poor in diet rather than healthy, nutritious food. A ban on these junk food advertisers would help reduce obesity among children. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I have to say I had a little uh, difficulty hearing you. Okay. Same. Yeah. What was this a word or two? I think it was about dealing with obesity. Yes, the issue is obesity. The bill uh, targets obesity. Yeah. 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 Are you, I'm, I'm trying to find out who's speaking because you're still muted. So who is speaking? Because Miriam, your your name keeps on coming up and that's not you. No, I'm not speaking. It's her speaking. Actually. Right. It was Esther. That I always say it was actually Esther. So that was actually Esther because. It is Esther. Yeah. She's having issues through her laptop, but she, she was speaking. So like I had her on a, like another way where she's able to speak. So I was letting her speak. Oh, uh, well, okay. thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> thank you for clarifying that. I just wanted to make sure. No, no, it was Esther. <laughs> yeah, that was that was Esther. Um, so what I got is that she's advocating for obesity throughout New York City, and then she was explaining how there's a lot of um, like disparities as a part, like that they're being disproportionately like like impacting other communities. But I was waiting to see like um, like the background behind it, like what her approach was. Okay, so not necessarily with the schools. No, no, no. I think oh, I think which I agree with one hundred percent. If you drive down Gun Hill Road, all yeah. you see is fast food restaurants, one after the other. Yeah, I was doing a study back then about type two diabetes, and it was saying like how yeah. they're like they're increasing tremendously, especially in more. Yep. But I'll I'll tell you, there's I mean, there there's many there's many places that are quote unquote fast food that that are decently nutritious like chipotle you know also indicich there there's like so many there's so many things that there's so many places that could be replaced with better quality yes. um yeah. the in spe, especially around the schools has the good fast food like i said i mean i drive down gun hill road all the time there is not one healthy alternative for people and also the pricing too. Like yes. or the unhealthier for like 
decisions are much more affordable than the healthy ones. Like if I got a, right. a salad is like 20 something and like a, like a burger with fries, like 50. Absolutely. I was Absolutely. Like, I, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but there, that, that would be, that's hard to control because you're dealing with businesses. You're dealing with whoever is going to, um, you know, open up a store or a franchise or whatever. So, um, but then again, I, I look at places like, quote unquote, across the street from St. Raymond's, okay, on East Tremont Avenue, you have Golden Corral. Now, yeah. Golden Corral, I, I, ha I have to say, their buffet is wonderful. Uh, I, I, it really is. You've got a plethora of healthy foods. You have, you have salads. You, I mean, there are a lot of things that, you know, are not as healthy, but you have, you have healthy choices. So something like that close to a school would just be so beneficial, but you, you really can't control the, the outer perimeter of that. Maybe uh, we can, maybe they should be offering incentives for healthy businesses to come and open up in neighborhoods. I know on Morris Park, we have the healthy kitchen and we have um, uh, the other one, healthy. Um, the healthy right? living. Something yeah, like yeah. Oh, yeah. Something can around you, that, yeah. And they're both great. I know I go to the healthy kitchen all the time. Yeah, it's very good. Something like that would be wonderful by a school. But that's just yes, it. They're, they're smoothies are to die for. Very good. Yeah, we yeah, also we need to offer that in every community. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to tell you, I have a friend who comes from New Rochelle to come and to get a smoothie for her children. The one that's right by um, on Mars Park between right next to Anthony's. Okay. Yes. Yes. I saw that one. Yeah. It's very good. I mean, I, I get my smoothies there too. So does my son, but she, she, she get, when she's here, she's from Virginia, but she's originally from New Rochelle. She'll drive down. We'll meet. And she says, I love the way their smoothies. They're wonderful. Yeah. So, I mean, my God, what's the better, what's the best, uh, the best thing is a nutritional smoothie with all the particular probiotics and everything else. So, right. uh, Chun Chun. You have your hand up. Chun Chun, are you with us? Boy, we're having technical difficulty tonight. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> okay. Um, so Esther, I see your hand up. Chun Chun, I see your hand up. You know. And as Cynthia put in the chat, incentivizing is a good idea. Yes, yeah. that that's a great idea. I mean, but it's just it's just sad that so many people do not see they they do not see the importance of having healthy alternatives, whether it be for the adult or the children, close to a school. Yeah. I just oh my god. But but it is not part of it's just not part of their, I guess, business plan or whatever. I, I just don't understand. I feel like it's not prioritized enough or it's just not receiving enough like recognition. Yeah. Like, I agree. Like, that's because I guess yeah. Yeah. benefiting from it, like who benefits from like promoting certain food and advertisement as opposed to those who are not really benefiting from it. Yeah. Uh, or can I make a really quick comment? as well so i was thinking that like you know like obesity also not only because how much we eat but then how much we actually put it out so like if you eat a lot if you exercise you know you kind of like cancel it out so i think that i see that a lot of kids that it's like like very active even though they like junk food they 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 have that what is that i would want to say that like their body, like they're they're young, their metabolism. It's they have the metabolism. Burn, yes, they can burn it off. You know, they may not get the nutrition that they need, but um, the exercise really can help preventing them. And I think that um, the lack of like promoting exercise is something that um, it really we something we should be addressing if we can fix the fast food mm -hmm. part of that. Yeah. Yeah, ex and nowadays kids are glued to their video games. Yes, so yeah. exercise has gone down. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well but, know, but this is all part of the curriculum in the school too. 
Yeah. I mean, there is phys ed, there's phys ed in the schools mm -hmm. and they, you know, there needs to be information. Well, there needs to be information and knowledge from the teacher about why it's important to exercise, et cetera, while they're doing it. So and they don't really have it every day too. Like it's just spread out throughout the week. So it's yeah. not that a student has a like gym every day. It's just yeah, we have gym out. once a week. Yeah. Oh so, my God, that's horrible. Yeah, that's it. I used to it's a, a week. Yeah. We used to have it. Oh, we used to have it almost every day. I yeah. loved. Well, of course, I loved it. But um, still, it was. It it was not well. It, it was not quality. It was not quality. Uh, gym time, but it's also there. Uh, years ago, there wasn't information taught. Right. Okay. No, and also I think that safety also related as well. That like if it's safe outside, I'll let my kid go play. You know, go to the playground, play basketball or roller skating, anything. So that get them to like exercise and burn out their energy. Yes. Instead of just staying home to like as you said, uh, playing video game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so safety is something that like it, it's important as well. Yeah. yeah. As, as a as a parent, I told my son, you have to pick, you have to pick one sport mm -hmm. each year for school. You have to pick one sport and you have to do it. If you want more than one, that's great, but you cannot have there had to be one sport, mm -hmm. even if you were bench warming. I don't care. You you pick that. Yeah, so. my kids play. Well, I coach them so. That made yeah. it a little easier. We were together all the time. Yeah. So, Chris, do you have a question? Uh, not a question as much as a comment. Um, I think we're like also missing an, uh, an important component here uh, to the discussion about healthy eating, which is what it costs to eat mm -hmm. the healthy foods, right? Uh, and we're, we're living in one of the poorest boroughs and not the poorest borough, right? And yep. how much cheaper... Is it to get a juice drink that is made of all these artificial sugars than it is to get a natural, you know, healthy uh, drink? Absolutely. Right? We know that with inflation, the cost of everything is going up. So even to have like a glass of milk or a gallon of milk at home is really expensive. So for families who are not doing well, we have to take into consideration that at schools, children are probably probably getting the most nutritious meal that they're going to get throughout the day, right? And so we have to, you know, adjust not just the issue at school, but the issues at home. Yes, like right? children eating um, healthy uh, at home as well. Well, with the food disparity, like you said, it is tough, difficult for families to eat healthy, especially when you have a grocery bill that you can't you can't afford. So, um, and not everybody can get to a farmer's market and here in the Bronx, we, we don't really have a lot of those. I mean, it's getting better, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, it, we still got a long way to go. So if, if at least in the schools, the children, they, they could monitor some sort of healthy quality and not be thrown all this package stuff and. Mm hmm uh, it would, it would just, um, it might ba well, it balance things one, out. One of, the things, one of the things, I'm not a food expert, by the way. So for the experts in the room, um, maybe you can clarify some of the information that I have heard throughout the years, right? I'm a big, uh, you know, a drinker of uh, uh, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, which is a caffeine drink. And I know that for probably one of the worst things. Um, Christine, you're breaking up. Sorry, I have to turn It's the is uh in the cold Pepsi. These are you know what it's been a while since my children in school. Can you can you hear me No. no. We're after getting said, like, after you said two Pepsi, or three words. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to move. If it makes it any easier, any better, let me know. You're if not, already. well, this is good wherever you are now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That we just heard. <laughs> but just, you know, talking about, you know, 
I, I'm a big, you know, I love, to, you know, my caffeine. So, I, but I don't drink coffee. So I get it out of a, a can of Coca-Cola uh, or a can of Pepsi. And, and for children, you know, in school, I mean, like these, these are one of the worst things um, yes. that they can be consuming throughout. But it yeah. is accessible to them. Yes. And it's cheap. How much is a can of soda? Well, you know, it's a dollar still a, it's 50? A dollar. <laughs> it's a well, yeah, maybe a dollar right. fifty. The water is free. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But if you try to get a healthy drink, it's a lot more expensive. That is true. The smoothie <laughs> costs ten dollars. Yeah. I mean, every time I you know, as far as soda, I love my I love my Coca-Cola. I do. But I don't have it in my house. I didn't have it growing up. But I still, every time I think about it, I say, you know, this still takes paint off the car. Yeah. And it stops me. It really does. I mean, worse comes to worse, I'll have a little bit. But it, it's sort of like it, it, you want to ingrain that, that, you know, life is just all about choices. And that, that and it also actually cleans your toilet bowl. Do you know that? Can of Coke, it does clean it. So, I mean, it's just, it's well, amazing. Even, just even going back to like, you know, uh, um, and how well or not they do when they have the um, eating habits, right? So like a who's consuming these caffeine drinks, right? This is a stimulant at the end of the day. Yeah. I know that I have a, you know, I need that to start my day, right? Imagine. Trying yeah, and then it, they crash. Once that's out of their system, the kids crash. Yeah. So I mean, it it is doing analysis. And we lost you again. So, can you hear me? No, a little bit. No, you're breaking up. You're Sorry breaking about up. That. There, there's got to be a healthy alternative besides. And I know with water, the one thing that has helped a few people that know that water is important the um the uh what do they call them the the like the, the crystal flavor. light well yeah. the, the little the flavor you put it you put in one drop yeah one drop and basically it makes it um it's a lot healthier than having any kind of powdered drink or whatever but and they'll drink at least an eight ounce whatever an eight ounce thing of water there are different alternatives to to soda and as far as as far as for uh, caffeine um i know for you know for myself i you know everybody usually gets to that three o'clock in the afternoon that three o'clock hump um and i have my herbalife tea my herbalife tea that is not caffeinated or whatever but for the natural ingredients that's in there that so i found an alternative so there are other alternatives that you could find if you, you know, but how do we, how do we do that to our children though? What, what do we give for our children? I, I, I don't know. Not everybody, you know, I mean, not and there, you've got children who have milk allergies. So but for me, I, I drink, I drink rice milk. You know, my, rice my milk. husband is vegan. So um, yes. he, he actually drinks almond milk. Yeah, so everybody's got their thing. I haven't drank full milk since 1990, so that that's what I drink. Mm -hmm. But that that was my choice because it, it it's it's a better alternative. It's a healthier alternative. But I, every once in a while, you like a uh, eight ounce glass of cold milk, whatever, and sometimes that that works. So everybody, there's so much alternatives out there. It's a matter of having our children know that there are alternatives and and giving them options early in life so that it stays with them you know i i you know i never had that growing up you know honestly the only thing was there was no orange juice maybe but no soda at all nothing no orange drink nothing just water maybe some orange juice and then you find out years later that so much sugar in orange juice I was like, you know, anyway, grapefruit is basically like orange juice without the sugar. So you, you got to do your homework. 
parents have to do their homework, but they have no control what goes on in the school. So. Well, that's more in the high schools. In the elementary schools, you don't, you won't find soda. It's just, it's not available to them. Is there a vending machine? No. Some okay. schools do have vending machines, yes. but soda is not an option. Yeah. That was something that was put in late in the school I went to. And I said, oh, this is not good. It was not good. It was a contract deal that they made or whatever. And I'm like, why? See, now St. Lucie's has vending machines, but no soda. There's juices and waters. There's iced tea, which has a lot of sugar. It's still better than uh, soda. But soda is not an option in vending machines in, in the schools I know of. Yeah. High school is another story. They do whatever they want there. Yeah. Oh, it's just something, it's really something to look at, something to do, to advocate for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just a lot of, there, there's, there's a lot of things to advocate for our children. Yeah. Health, exercise, eating better. I mean. Christine, you had another question? Or was your hand up from before? No, that, that was up from before. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. I'll take it down. Keith, so, do you have anything to add? I'm sorry, Christine. Say that again. I'm sorry. They I couldn't hear you. I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm not breaking up. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to take the hand. Down. Oh, <laughs> I'm good. Okay. I'm good. There it goes. All right. Okay, um, I think well, what wait, I, just I think one of the other items we were going to talk about is follow up issues, but I don't know if there's any updates on follow up issues. Um, was there any any movement or anything about getting the parking spaces for the teachers? The parking permits? Now that we would have to contact DOT for. Okay, so. I just, I, 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 that just uh, boggles my mind that with so many other more important things to do that you still have to worry about where to park your car. Oh, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't quite understand that. Um, and if you don't have, if you don't have uh, parking space, then get the permits for your teachers. Yeah. <sighs> I know my school, we have a whole block that um, is no parking during school hours, seven to four. Right. But yet the school buses all park there and we don't have school buses. Oh, so, oh, uh, yes, yes. The school park. buses park oh, there. Go to sleep. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that's a whole different ball game. That's so. a good idea, Cynthia, to bring it up at the transportation committee meeting. Oh, yeah, because it's, it's. I, I I just I don't understand I don't understand the the common sense of it is that you you've got to accommodate the teachers they yes. are teaching the children so right. I don't understand why that is even a discussion point and to be quite honest the school buses can park any way they want as far as I'm concerned they park they park all up and down Van Est Avenue they park wherever they need to park yeah. So why why take up the spaces that the teachers have? If the teachers had the permits, they would be there very early in the morning and the buses wouldn't be able to do it. So yeah. um, that is definitely something we could bring up at the transportation committee. See what past information has been done on it, what past actions have been taken on it, um, where they stand now and why hasn't this been um, discussed especially since they're, the teachers are being openly verbal about it. So yeah. uh, I think I think the transportation committee for this month has been canceled. Uh, so we, it'll have to be brought up at the next transportation yeah. committee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK, so um, without further ado, if there are no no other questions or any things to be brought to the floor. Do we have to vote on the minutes? Ah. Uh, Yes, we do. And as far as I am concerned, I read the minutes. Uh, I don't know, Chun Chun, if you had read the minutes. I don't know if Keith has. 
Uh, just, Phyllis, you read it because you wrote it. I wrote so, it. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I have, I want to make a motion to approve the minutes from last month, which was November, 2022. And if there is any opposition. I second. Thank you. Any opposition to this? No. Okay. Okay. The minutes from November, 2022 for the education, culture and youth services has been approved. All right. Thank you. I want everybody. Um, we're going to come into closing and I want everybody to have a wonderful Christmas, a wonderful holiday season. Grab that time with your family, spend time doing the things that you need to, um, just grab those joyful moments. Go into the, there's a lot of community events that are going on. Grab, grab those moments and grab those, uh, Christmas tree lightings and, um, the Mars park is having the trolley, which is always great. There's yes. you, all you have to do is go anywhere on Facebook. You'll find any kind of events mm -hmm. going on and, uh, you should partake in them. Also, I think it was brought, uh, there was a public email that was sent to everybody about the uh, New York Botanical Gardens. Yep. That, and I, I, I got my two tickets. So I, that trade show, I've, I've brought my son to that trade show uh, quite a few years in a row. And I'll tell you, it, it's just, uh, it's just wonderful. And when he was younger, they also had, you know, Thomas the Train over at the theater. It, it's just a, it's just a wonderful thing. And, and the trade show itself is good. It's wonderful for adults. They make everything out of, eco-friendly material, which is, I think is amazing. And each year they submit new, um, new items. So, uh, mm -hmm. there's always something to look at. So if you've never gone to it, please do. It's definitely something that you will enjoy. Um, I want to wish everybody a very, very wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. And until our next meeting, I. Uh, want to say that we are closing our meeting at 8 14. Mm -hmm. okay and i want to just wish everybody a wonderful wonderful holiday season thank you you yes. too merry christmas happy merry Hanukkah. Christmas. yes enjoy yourself enjoy yourself thank Have you fun. and uh, remember Yankee Leadership Awards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any questions, you could call me, you could text me, whatever. Um, hopefully I will have the answer. But you know, you never know. The more information, the more the more it says about 50 hours of volunteer work. But if there are initiatives that the um, nominee is doing, that is a plus. If there are references, uh letters of letters of recommend recommendation all of these are things to build a positive mm -hmm. character reference so um there's so many ways to um and you never know just submit it uh make sure it goes through a um a organization because the yes. president of that organization has to sign off mm -hmm. it could be from any organization uh Morris Park Community Association, the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance. It could be from uh, precinct the, council. The what? Precinct council. Yes, precinct council. It could be from. Um, uh, it could be from the Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association, but the head of that organization has to sign off. So I, I know that the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance had one submission. So I think that uh, we are able to take on one more. Mm -hmm. um, if there's any, ever any question about which organization doesn't have that, you can speak, call up Jeremy and ask him or, you know, give me a call because we, we, as soon as the submissions come in, they're, they're sent to the chair and the co-chair. And if they're not, you have to ask for it. So, <laughs> but uh, right now we just have from the, also from the public library, that's another one. So they can actually submit the director of that public library can submit. So again, I'm going to say thank you. Every thank you everybody for your questions tonight. It was wonderful. Um, everybody stay safe, stay healthy. 
and enjoy your friends and your family. Okay? Good night. Take care. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, God, another new year. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.